Hello YouTube, I'm APC and today I'm making a tutorial for you guys. This is going to be the first part of a two-part series where I'm going to be talking about making parallax effects. In this part, I'm going to be walking through the concept as well as some some math. And um, in the next part, I'll be going going ahead and coding it, implementing it in GameMaker. So if um, you'd rather just go ahead and jump straight into the coding, or if math just frightens you for some reason, then uh, you can just go ahead and jump over to the coding part. That's you're not going to have any issues, though there will be a link in the description for that. But I, for one, like to kind of, I like math, for one thing, and, and I also like to kind of see exactly how things are working in real life rather than just kind of throwing around numbers. So we're going to try and fully um, grasp the concept of parallax today, and I'm going to show you the math behind it. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and draw our area. So let's see, we have our window, this is going to be our game. And I'm gonna has a width. I'm gonna give it a nice capital W because I'm be using W more often in this tutorial. And likewise, we have a height. Give it a nice capital H. So in this um, within this game, we have multiple layers. All right. So I'm gonna draw the foreground. All right. And this is gonna be the area where our player is gonna be on. And you know when you're making games, we, uh, the area where you're throwing the objects on, the area the characters interacting with is gonna be all gonna be the foreground. Um, now we draw another layer. Let's have like a housing development in the background. Very nice. And now let's add another layer just to grasp the concept. Let's get, get some lush rolling hills out there. So we're in a nice, peaceful alpine environment. All right. So. This is our demo frame. So the whole idea of parallax is that we have all these layers, and whenever the player moves, the layers will move at different speeds. Because you know, if you're, um, if you're if you're moving along, the trash can right in front, right close to you, is going to move faster through your point of view than the mountain to the background, just because you know things that are smaller and things that are closer um, will move faster relative to you than the things that are very large in the background. All right, so. If you um if you know if you were to program this so that he would walk back and forth and things will move accordingly, it would look something kind of like this. I made a little demo. So you know. As I'm moving the things closest to me, the things that I'm place I'm standing moves faster. The housing development doesn't move as fast. And you know, the lush mountains, things that are far away, they move rather slowly. And this creates kind of a cool three D effect and it's not too hard. So that's what that is. Now, in order to better visualize this, let's do this from a different angle. So this is from the front. Let's look at it from the top. So this triangle is going to represent our field of view. So this uh, theta, I suppose, theta is equal to our field of view. Anybody um, looking at something, they can only see it at a certain angle. So uh, humans, I think, can go at about 160 degrees. So if you, if you um, hold both your hands out in front of you and slowly draw them apart while still looking forward, um, pay attention to when you're, you can no longer see your arms. I think uh, what I'm doing, as I'm doing it right now, it's about 160 degrees, I suppose. So that's, that's the angle between my arms when I can't see out of them anymore. So I suppose for a human, it would be more about like over here, something like that. It doesn't really matter, but that's where that angle comes from. And this, these black lines represent the, the um, edge of our sight. And of course, as we're further away from this point, which where the camera is, so that's where the camera is, as we're further away from that point, so if we're out here, out here, out here, there's more space for more things. Whereas closer, there's can't fit a whole lot. All right? So that's kind of the concept of this area. Interestingly enough, actually, I think humans, I said, are somewhere around here. I think some animals, like I think rabbits, the animals that have the eyes on the side of their heads, they have extremely huge field of view, like maybe almost 270, so they all the way around like that. Anyway, that's kind of a side note. So let's let's kind of draw draw where where these layers are in terms of this field of view. So it's looking at from looking at from above. So this is about our foreground. We'll say it's about there, and our housing development will be here, a little further away, and the mountains will be out here, a little further away yet. So I'm going to go ahead and label these. So here's our frame layer one, layer two, layer three. All right. Each of these has different widths. Okay, so let's say number one, we'll say that has width one, we'll say this one has width two, and this one has width three. Because in real life, 
you know, the mountains, the width of those mountains in the background are a heck of a lot wider than the width of this foreground here. But when they're drawn on screen, screen they're the same width. Okay. We're going to be wrestling with that idea, and using that we're going to kind of end up with a nice equation at the end. All right, so now we've got that set up. Let me go ahead and go through a scenario of our, if our camera is moving. So I'm going to draw the um, field view this again. I'm going to draw it a little wider this time. And I'll draw my three layers again. Now, let's say that we take our camera here, right, and we move it to the left by something, let's say one pixel or something like that. So then our field of view is now something like that. All right. So um, we shifted our camera one pixel, so of course in each of these areas that's also one pixel that we shifted over. So we can see exactly one pixel less of each of these layers. So, you know, one pixel less of the mountains, one pixel less of the housing development, all that. Let's kind of, um, so this is kind of how it works in terms of this camera view. Let's kind of think about how it looks in terms of our game window view. All right, so let me I'll draw my window real quick. All right, so those are three layers. Now, this is uh, prior to this shift. So let's try and think how it will look after the shift. All right, and I split them into you know three segments so we can easily see exactly how each of them being changed. OK, so look at this one first. If we look in this field of view, very little of the red part is left. So like 75% of it is gone. So it will look something like something like that. All right, and now uh, if we look at the um, blue blue part, the housing development, let's see. That's we still have a little less than half left. So if I, or if I were to redraw that, it would look something like that. All right, now um, in the mountainous region, we still have quite a bit over half left. So let's kind of redraw that and it's like that. All right, so um, this is kind of odd because all each each section was only shifted by one pixel, as I said in the beginning. But you can see here they've all been in the in terms of the view, we've had we've ended up shifting them each by different amounts. This one dx one, this one dx two, and this one dx three. All right, so now we're kind of getting into what we're looking for. We're trying to figure out what what determines the difference between these dx's? Okay, so as I've been kind of talking about when I was thinking about how this was written, I've I've been talking in terms of the percent, the percent that's still left. I suppose I'm going to actually be calculating the percent that goes away each time. So, um, yeah. So we're thinking in terms of percents that will kind of translate well to how much they change on the screen. So, all right, let's see. So percent that goes for frame one or layer one is going to be equal to one is the amount that goes away and the percent of that entire layer is one divided by the actual width of that layer so with width of number one p2 is going to be likewise be one divided by the width of the two and p3 is going to be likewise one divided by width of the third one. So you know if if the first one is like two blocks, then shifting one pixel over out of the two pixels, that will be 50% going away. If the second one is I don't know five pixels wide, then if we shift by one. That's 20% of it leaving. So you kind of get the point. That's how it works. Working back over here again. Um, this is in terms of the widths of the real things, how how big they are in reality. But in our game, in our game when we're programming it, they're pretty much all the same width. When you're looking at it from this view over here in the game window, they're pretty much all the same width. So rather than this percent being being the percent of their actual width, we're gonna this calculus dx by the percent of the screen that's going away. So so the dx one would be whatever the percent 
is that's that's leaving times the width of the entire screen. So we can calculate all of them in that way. Does that make sense? Cool. So yeah, it's all about thinking about in terms of percentage that's leaving the screen. So this DX1 is being pushed over by a lot more because this percent is a lot higher because its width is a lot smaller. All right, I'm not sure if that cleared anything up. That might just complicate things, but let's run through an example. So I'll, I'll just say example. There we go. Let's say our width is equal to 1280 and our height is equal to 720, a fairly standard resolution. All right, um, okay. So let's try and figure this out. So, okay, I'll throw some more things out here. So let's say, and let's throw together the widths because we need the widths to, for this first part. So I'm gonna say the width sub one, the width of the first one, we'll say that's the same as the, as the window width because that's generally how it works. The foreground is the same width as window. And for the sake of trying to get this all um, a concept of how big this is, let's say it's 10 meters. That's roughly how much we can see. All right, and then our width too. Remember, this is of the housing development. Let's say that's more like 500 meters. So to calculate this, um, let's see, that's the same as dividing that by two, multiply it by 100. So divided by two is 640. Multiply by 100 is uh, okay. Math tricks help, but having already recorded this helps even more because I did not come up with that that fast the first time. Um, okay, so next part are lush mountains. Let's say we can see 10 kilometers of mountains. Let's see. Yeah, by the way, I'm sticking to the metric system. I know us, us Americans aren't very good with the metric system, but I figure more of you are not American, so hopefully it'll make things easier for you guys. All right, so um, 10,000 meters in terms of our pixels is, hmm, so that's this one times 20, so if I multiply by two, and that will be 100, da, 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 da. okay, about 1.28 million. Again, it's helpful having pre-recorded this. I wouldn't have come up with numbers so fast otherwise. Okay, or helpful having done this already. Okay, so now we can do our calculations. So um, I'm going to go ahead and skip the percentage step. Hopefully that's okay. So um, how much is um, our our, four, our red layer, our layer one shifted if we move one pixel? Well, so that is equal to, well first off, what percent of the screen is, is being um, disappearing? If we shift one pixel, well, that's one divided by twelve eighty. That's the real width. That's what percent of this layer is disappearing, and then figure out what percent or how much is actually disappearing. We're going to multiply it by the actual window width. So that's actually equal to one in this case. Now let's do it for the housing layer. So if we're moving one pixel, then that is let's see one divided by six four thousand. That's the percent or f fractional amount that's taken away and then if I multiply that by the 1280 uh, I guess we'll throw that in a calculator real quick that is divided by 64,000 uh, 0.02 or 1 divided by 50 so I'm going to write 1, div oh, oh, 1 divided by 50 alright so again the percent that goes away is a lot smaller because you know the housing development is a lot bigger than our uh, foreground and thus the amount that disappears on the screen is much smaller so when we find that percent multiply it by the um, width of the screen it ends up being a lot smaller and now I'll do the last one it should be smaller still so I'm going to say DX that should be a 2 right there and this one should be a 3 so I'm going to say 1 divided by, that's 1.2. I guess I'll put an M there for a million or so. Don't have to write out all the digits. Multiply by 1280, and we get calculator. Um, that's, let's see, so we have 1 divided by 
one two eight zero oh, one two three. All right, multiply by twelve eighty, and that is one over a thousand. All right, so whenever we're shifting at one pixel, we can uh, that's how much shifted by. So let, let's say for example, let's say our um, where we're going to be, sh let's say we're shifting our screen by, I don't know, eight pixels per second or a second. Let's figure out what the speed of each of our layers will be if we're shifting at that speed. So if we look at our foreground layer, well, that is going to be equal to the amount that's shifted is eight times the amount shifted for a single pixel, which is going to be equal to eight pixels per second, the same thing. Now moving on to the housing development, we can calculate it the same way. It's going to be the amount of pixels moved per second is eight times the amount of we move for one pixel, so dx2, which is going to be equal to 8 divided by 50 pixels per second. And then moving on to the last one, that one is going to be 8 times the amount of one pixel in that um, layer which we end up with 8 over 1,000 pixels per second. So that's how we can compute how much to shift each time. But hopefully you learned something from this. Hopefully you found it interesting, and hopefully you, you um, kind of learned to think about this in, in an understandable way. So um, with that, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial where I'll be talking about how to code this thing.